Hello and welcome to the third video of the FP2 chapter Complex Numbers. Start a question on the screen. Prove by induction that this is equal to this for all natural numbers. Remember that a proof by induction has this limit on it. This is a review from FP1 with some of the FP2 content. Proof by induction, we start with the basis step. And the basis step is to check that this works for n equals 1. The left hand side, we get r e to the i theta to the power of 1, which is obviously r e to the i theta. And then on the right hand side, we get r to the 1 e to the i times 1 times theta, which is i theta. And pretty obviously, that is the same thing. True for n equals 1. Then we have our assumption, which is this statement here, when n is equal to k. I won't write that out, because I don't have too much space here. Then we go to our inductive step, which is to show that if it's true when n equals k, it is also then true for n equals k plus 1. So we have r e to the i theta to the power k plus 1. Now, as I said on a previous video, we have to be careful with indices. We can't just assume that this works like normal because this is a complex number. But what we can do is break this into its pieces, re to the i theta to the k times re to the i theta. And then we can apply the index here because that's what our assumption is, that this is true. So applying our assumption gives us r to the k e to the i k theta. And then we have to times this by r e to the i theta. And then what we need to do is use those properties that we had in the previous video, that for z w, the multiplication of two complex numbers, which is what this now is, is equal to the modulus of z times the modulus of w. And the argument of z w is equal to the addition of the argument of z and the argument of w. And we apply these two rules to these two complex numbers here. And we can see that the modulus of their multiplication must be the modulus of this times the modulus of this. So we get r to the k times r. And then we get an argument of k theta plus i theta, like this. And that's not using indices rules so much as it is using these two properties here that we've proven previously. Then because r is not a complex number in and of itself. We've got k plus 1 here, that's fine. e, and then of course we can factorize out i theta and have a k plus 1 in brackets here. So we've shown this is true for n equals k plus 1. If it's true for n equals k, and we know it's true for n equals 1, so then we have our conclusion. that it is true for all positive integers or natural numbers. OK, we're going to use this statement in this video, but we're also going to use proof by induction in this video. So we've reviewed two things that we're going to use. And what we're going to use them for is to know and prove de Moivre's theorem, which is the basis for the next two videos. Before we do that, let's just lead into it gently. Show that this thing squared is equal to this thing. Uh, we're going to go somewhere with this, bear with me. We've got r squared, obviously, times cos theta plus i sine theta squared from the left-hand side. And that will equal r squared times cos squared theta i squared sine squared theta, so minus sine squared theta. And then we've got plus 2i sine theta cos theta. And if you remember your trig identities, cos squared minus sine squared is equal to cos 2 theta. And 2 sine theta cos theta is equal to sine 2 theta. So using trigonometric identities, we have shown that this is true. OK, so what? Well, bear with me still. We're going to do it again with q. But this time, what I'm going to do is change the modulus argument form of the complex number here into the exponential form, e to the i theta times r. 
make that a cubed and from the work we just proved on the starter question we know that that is written like this without any problems then if i remember what this means i've got r cubed that's modulus e to the i times three theta just to make it clear that three theta is now the argument and i put that back into modulus argument form we've got r cubed cos of three theta plus i sine of three theta and this is just a different way of showing more or less the same thing that we can change this kind of thing into this kind of thing and yes we can keep going r cos theta plus i sine theta all to the power of four is going to equal r to the four cos four theta plus i sine of four theta and if instead we had a five here then this would be a five five theta five theta like so when you see it like this it's kind of obvious that it works but this is called de moivre's theorem in its general form looking like this you have a complex number in modulus argument form to the power n you can put the power on the modulus and then it becomes a multiplier in the argument and this statement while it might seem obvious from the work that we've done so far leading into it is really really useful it forms the basis of the rest of this video and also the next two videos you can prove this for positive integers using induction which we'll do in the final example or you can prove it for all integers using euler's relation together with this statement which is very similar to what i did on the previous screen basically you just put this in here instead of the modulus argument form and using the work that we did on the starter question we know that this is equal to this and then you put this exponential bit back into cos plus i sine form so why is this so useful well first of all it makes simplifying stuff really easy for example something like this here we don't really need to worry too much about this power especially because we don't have an r or more to the point r is a one so here we can just bring this power in as a multiplier in the argument same here we've just got to be a little bit careful with this minus as with the previous video this is not in the right format it's a plus so what we need to do first is get rid of this minus by bringing it into the sign remember minus sine of theta is the same as sine of minus theta so if i put a little minus in here then i can put a plus here but then the arguments don't match and the arguments have to match but that's okay because cos of theta is the same as cos of minus theta so i don't need to do anything else i can just stick a little minus in there if it helps me and in this case it does so by manipulating that now i can just bring this power in as a multiplier here and here as well and then we know that when you divide two complex numbers you subtract their arguments so that's where we're going this becomes cosine of 5 times 9 pi over 17 that's 45 pi over 17 plus i a sine of 45 pi over 17 divided by cosine of minus 6 pi over 17 plus i sine minus 6 pi over 17. so i've manipulated this to get a plus so that i can apply this result where r is equal to 1 so i can just bring the n in as a multiplier on the arguments five on this one three on this one now i've got a complex number here again with r is equal to one divided by another complex number here with r is equal to one so i'm going to use z1 divided by z2 and when we looked at that we found that when you do this the argument of two complex numbers divided by is equal to the argument of the complex number in the numerator minus the argument of the complex number in the denominator so this I just need to subtract this one minus this one of course with this being a negative that's effectively adding the two so we end up with 51 pi over 17 and 51 over 17 is 3 and 3 pi is a nice number for trigonometry and that actually just equals minus 1 and that equals a zero so we end up with minus one 
as the final answer for this fairly horrible looking starting point. So we can use it to simplify things like this. We can also use it for expanding brackets when a complex number is written in x plus i y form by changing it into modulus argument form. So something like this to the power of 7 is not nice. You'd have to expand 7 brackets, maybe throw in the binomial theorem or something. Or we can just work out modulus argument form and then bring the power into the argument of theta and put the power on the modulus. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a little argand diagram here. One is maybe here, root 3 maybe here. So the modulus... 1 squared plus root 3 squared is 4, square rooted is 2, and theta is this angle here, which I can get by doing the inverse tan of root 3 over 1, which is pi by 3. So in modulus argument form, this is 2 times the cosine of pi by 3, plus i sine pi by 3, and of course all of this is still to the power of 7. Now, using de Moivre's theorem, I can simply write that this is equal to 2 to the power of 7 times cosine of 7 pi by 3 plus i sine 7 pi by 3. And then to put it back into x plus y i form, I can just expand this out and do it on my calculator. So continuing on, that's 2 to the 7 is 128. And this gives us half, if you put that on your calculator, and i times root 3 over 2, which simplifies to 64 plus 64 root 3 i. So this theorem is a very good way to simplify expressions of powers of complex numbers. To prove it, let's go back to this. Use proof by induction to prove de Moivre's theorem, which you might have to do in an exam. In this case, for all positive integers, it's tagged on there because that's what proof by induction does. Not that it isn't true for negative integers, but this method is limited to a proof for these things. To do this, same as before, basis step, show it's true for n is equal to 1. Left-hand side gives r cos theta plus i sine theta to the 1. It's obviously just that. And the right-hand side gives r uh, to the 1 cos of 1 theta plus i sine of 1 theta. So yes, quite obviously this is true for n equals 1. Then we have the assumption step. Again, I won't write it out to save space, but basically this is our assumption when this n is equal to k. And then we have our inductive step. where we need to prove it for n is equal to k plus 1. So we've got r cos theta plus i sine theta, all raised to the power of k plus 1. And that can be split into two pieces. r cos theta plus i sine theta, all to the power of k, times r cos theta plus i sine theta, and then we use our assumption on this section here to replace it with this expression, which gives us r to the k cos k theta plus i sine k theta times by r cos theta plus i sine theta. Then, of course, the two r's combine nicely to give us the modulus that we need. And then the multiplication of the brackets gives us cos k theta cos theta plus i sine k theta i sine theta. So we have i squared there, which gives us a minus sine k theta sine theta. And then plus i sine k theta cos theta plus i sine theta cos k theta. And hopefully that's fairly familiar to you. Because of our previous work, again, we're using these two identities. So we get r, k plus 1, and then this part here combines to give us cos a plus b, which is k theta and theta. 
we have cos of k theta plus theta. And then if I factorize out i here, I get sine k theta cos theta plus sine theta cos k theta, and that can change to sine k theta plus theta. We still have the i in front. And then you can see that we're pretty much there. We'll just finish it off by putting it in the form of k plus 1. So we've got cos of theta times k plus 1. Lots of brackets coming in here just to keep it nice and accurate. We can now say this is true for n equals k plus 1 if it's true for n equals k, and we know it was true for n equals 1, therefore the conclusion follows that this is true for all positive integers. And although we've got a lot more to say about de Moivre's theorem, that should be enough for you to try the questions from exercise 3c, which is mostly about simplifying expressions. I'll get into something a little bit more interesting in the next video. Maybe I'll see you there.